In this demonstration, we're going to examine how to use Hue with EMR. First thing is you need to select Hue as a package to be installed, as you can see here. Then I ran a few jobs. Now what's important is the next step. We need the master public DNS. We've captured it here. We insert it here, and then we're going to go to port 8888. The first thing that comes open is our account creation page. We'll create this as AWS admin, and we'll give it a specialized password. Well, now that we've logged in, let's take a tour of Hue. First, let's just go to the About Hue page itself. The first thing you get is this quick start guide that will help you check your configuration, give you a chance to load all the examples, configure additional users, and quote, go for it, taking you back to the Hue homepage. Something else of interest. You can select this configuration, and it will give you a list of all the different applications that have been loaded. You can see this is quite a healthy list. You also can go to any one of these applications, select it, and it will show you all the parameters that were set. Now here's a tip. Later, we are going to come back and manually configure Hue. It's a great resource for trying to figure out what the right settings should be. Additionally, you can get the logs for Hue, and that's under Server Log. Now let's go to the Hue homepage. This is one of the great things about Hue when you use it with EMR. You get lots of excellent samples that you can actually explore and learn to use Hive and Pig and HBase. Excellent. Now, before we go any further, I think it's time to do a little file management. Let's take a look at HDFS and S3. We've talked before about the EMR file system. Here's an example of it. We have both S3 such as edu buck as our bucket. We have our data. We have our pet store. And we wanted to grab this particular file, sales2014.csv. I want to make a copy of it. And it is going to allow me to copy it into another location. In fact, what the slash is, is on my HDFS instance. I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it Pet Sales. Now we'll copy this file. We've taken this file off of S3 and into our HDFS. We can explore that directly from this line. There is the folder. Here is the file. So that's how to use Manage HDFS in S3. Next, let's go to the Metastore Manager. This is a console into Hive Metastore, which allows you to access both Hive and Pig data. We can see that we're using the default database, but you could set an additional one. And as you can see, the tables we have available for us, they're here. Now we can go into a table like CloudFront Logs. You can see that you've got a listing of all the columns and all the data types. They provide you an insight to a sample set of data and the properties that were used. Very helpful. Let's go back, and I would like to create a new table. And we're going to do this from a file. Let's give it a name. We need an input file. We're going to import the data from the file. Warning, the selected file is going to be moved during the import, which means it will be deleted after it's imported. There you go, there's an example. Let's go ahead and complete this. 
Here's how you name your columns. Now we're going to create the table. The table is created. Here are our columns with our names and the data types. We can see a sample of the data as well and the properties. We can use this button to browse the data itself. And scroll through all. Now let's run to our query editor. We're going to select Hive. We need to select our table, which will be pet stores. And we're definitely not going to drop it. Let's do a simple count. We can see the query that's being run. We can see the log output. We can again look at the columns, and here's the results. These are some recent queries I have run. And check the results again. There we go. We have 3,822 rows in this table. Last, let's go check the job browser. Here we go, Manage Jobs. And you can see that we've recently run two successful jobs. One of the nice things about here is that you can drill in very deeply to find all the different logs that you're looking for. Here's the container logs. Here are the task logs. Here's the log for this particular attempt. We can also look at the counters and the particular log input. Excellent. I hope this was a good review. I encourage you to come back, set this tool up, and experiment and use some of the sample data that AWS provides.